Welcome to the podcast, Let the Prophet Speak. Today we are studying Amos, the prophet Amos, Amos chapter 3. This is Saul Weiner, the host for your podcast. In the last chapter, we ended with a discussion between God and the people where God said how he had taken them out of Egypt and given them and helped them and conquered the land for them. And instead of having the proper gratitude and instead of um, living according to the uh, laws and ideals that God was trying to teach, they became corrupted. Uh, Today's chapter continues on that theme to some extent. And Amos um, uses various metaphors to uh, characterize the relationship between God and the people and also touches on the nature of prophecy in general and also touches on the unique relationship between God and his people, the unique responsibility of of God's people, and also touches on the the, uh, responsibility that we all have to learn and read from the signs around us. And also today we'll learn about how he really defines what is the corruption and rot in the society that that is in, inevitably will lead ultimately to destruction. So let's begin chapter 3. Shim'u es hadavor hazeh. Listen, says the prophet, to this thing, this idea. I shared, or this word. I shared, diber Adonai aleichem b'nei Yisrael, that God has spoken about you, you sons of Israel. I'll call Hamish Bacha on the entire family. Here Amos, even though he uses the language Yisrael, he emphasizes that he's referring to Israel and Judah, the northern and the southern kingdom. On the entire family, Asher Ha'aleti Me'eretz Mitzrayim Lemar, the entire family whom I took out of the land of Egypt, saying as follows, listen to that which God has said. And what did God say? Verse 2, Rak etchem yodati. It is only you that I have known in such a close way. God revealed himself to Israel in such a close way in a way that only this nation had that experience. Um, from all the families of the world. And that leads to a special responsibility that you have to live appropriately in order to set an example for everyone else. Alkain Efkod Alechem, because I have this special relationship with you, and because I intervened in history special for you, and because I gave you that special responsibility. Therefore, I will also always remember and keep tabs on, so to speak, at of all of your mistakes. Special, um, this, this, this special relationship leads to special responsibilities. And those responsibilities are above and beyond what the other families of the world have who haven't been included in that. Uh, and the idea, of course, being that, that by keeping these ideals, you can set an example for everyone. And as we'll see at the end of this chapter, they did the opposite of set an example and almost calls to the people around them and says, look at these people and see how corrupt they are. You're setting an example for the opposite of what you're supposed to. And this relationship has many different aspects. And let's see, verse 3, um, Is it possible for two people to walk together? Um, on a path, bilti im no adu. If they do not have a moed, no adu means if they do not have a a meeting. Now, this 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 verse, um, the commentaries and translators have struggled with the meaning of this verse many times over and over again. Um, I I I'm going to translate and explain as follows: the no adu, the root of the word no adu is moed. Moed means a it's a special time. And it could mean often a time of celebration, but also we find it used a time of reckoning, a time of suffering. A moed is both. And the prophet chooses this language, I believe, specifically to bring out this point. And that is that hayel hu, is it possible that two people can have a close relationship and there not be two aspects to this relationship? In other words, they both enjoy the benefits of their closeness, but they also have responsibilities because they are close. And therefore, no adu, they have the moed. They have times when 
because of those responsibilities, the intensity of the um, of the suffering because they don't fulfill those responsibilities is more intense, and also because they have that relationship, the time of 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 wondrous goodness when they are fulfilling their responsibilities to each other are so great, like a moed, like a special holiday. So it's both. Is it possible for two to go together like God and Israel? If they do not have a moed, they will have moed. They will have both good and bad. They will both exist. Amos now gives us several um, uh, several metaphors. And I'm going to... Uh, there's so many different explanations. Um and I'm going to try my best to stick to what the, the meaning of the words to the best of my ability to bring out the deep meaning and the incredible lessons that we can learn from these metaphors. Let's see verse 4. Hayish ag bayar. Is it possible for a lion to roar in the forest? Viteref ain lo. And he not have teref. Teref would mean his prey, the prey that he has preyed upon, that he had captured to eat. Um, we have seen in these chapters before and in the in the preceding prophet, the words of the prophet Joel, God being compared to the roaring of a lion. Hayish ag arye bayar here. Um, a lion roars uh, to show strength, to show power, to demonstrate that he is, so to speak, the king of the jungle. So hayish ag arye bayar. Can a lion show strength if he has no tariff? If he has, if he has not caught something to eat if he has not, if he doesn't feel power over others. In other words, the, the power of the lion comes from his domination of others, but also comes from his ability to gain strength and to eat. The, um, what, we, what we see here, there, without, without um, the, the type of power that you have as a people the type of roaring that you're doing is the roaring that one does when one empowers themselves by taking down others. This is uh, uh, the, the, um, the roaring of the lion, one of the meanings of this metaphor. How can you as a people think of yourselves as powerful when your power comes from taking advantage over others? Another meaning of this metaphor is without tariff, without food, you don't be powerful. In other words, by gaining all of that bounty, by having food, by having what to eat, and so on, by having wealth, that is why you consider yourselves powerful. That is why you consider yourselves strong. Another understanding of this is that the Arya here is not referring to the people, but referring to God. And God's strength is, is often perceived by us as when we see tariff, when we see others Suffering. When we see suffering, then we see, oh, that's the might of God. That's the strength of God. So we perceive his strength through the suffering. And unfortunately, when there is no suffering, when God is giving us what we need, we often perceive God as weak and stray and go to other places. And then the second half of this verse reiterates the first lesson. Hayitain kefir kolo mima So does a young lion put out its voice from his abode, from where he lives, from his den, if he has not captured anyone. This is often we find the prophets reiterate the, the lessons in different words to pound in the point. The next verse, verse 5, is another metaphor with many meanings. And again, we're going to go through this one too. Can a bird fall and get captured in the traps that are laid in the ground? They would lay traps in the ground that the bird would come either to eat some kind of bait or food, and then the trap would spring up and capture the bird. Umokesh ein la, and there would be no, um, uh, no uh, one laying that trap. The um, the idea here being that. Um, Obviously, a bird cannot get trapped if there is no if there is if if there is no trap. In other words, the suffering cannot happen if there is no one making the suffering happen. If there is no one laying the trap, then then it doesn't happen. So, in other words, he's pointing out the idea that if 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 there is suffering, it is because there is someone to be trapped, 
and there's someone who laid that trap. And that someone, of course, is meant to be God. Hayale, uh, he continues to say, Hayale pachmin ha'adama. Can a, a a snare spring forth from the ground? You know, because they would bury like a rope or a snare in the ground, and then as the animal walks by, it would spring out of the ground and snatch the animal and it would not catch anything. So again, this idea will 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 someone lay a trap if there's no one there to be trapped? In other words, will God place punishment and suffering on this world if there is no one in the world that that the, to whom it is directed, these things don't exist for no reason. We are supposed to look at the world around us and define those signs and say, what does this mean to us? The things that happen in the world around us are there for us to interpret and decide their meaning. And if there is punishment, if there is suffering, it is our responsibility to look at it and learn something from it. It's not just happening for no reason. Let's go on to verse 6. And now, again, he's he's pounding in the point that when there are warning signs, those signs are meant to be interpreted by us. If a shofar, a ram's horn, is sounded in the city, will not the people tremble? People understand when they hear a warning siren that it means something dangerous is coming and they will be afraid. Therefore, we need to look at the world around us and look at the signs around us also and interpret them and realize that there's something wrong with this. We need to look at it and realize, if there is something bad happening in the city, and God has not done it. In other words, let's, he's giving us the key to this metaphor. The warning signs and the punishment isn't just coming randomly, it's coming because someone did it. And who is that someone? That someone is God. Because in verse 7, God does not do anything. Unless he reveals his secret El Avadov Hanavim to his servants, the prophets. And here I believe that what Amos is doing is telling us the secret of what prophecy really is. Now, what prophecy is, is the ability and the uh, um, intellectual honesty to be able to look at the signs around and interpret them honestly and say, this is what is happening. A prophet, more than someone who can just, who's, it's not someone who's a fortune teller about the future or a magical magician who speaks to God, but it's someone who can see God in everything, someone who can see the meaning in what's happening around, someone who can look at the world and say, this is the lesson I am supposed to learn. Um, so the point being, if a shofar blows, we need to pay attention. It is a warning sign. If something is happening, we need to interpret it. And in a moment, he's going to tell us exactly what is happening that we need to interpret and how we should be interpreting it. Um, if a shofar... Uh, uh, in verse 9... Amos continues and tells us as follows. Actually, I'm sorry, verse 8. Um, since it is our responsibility to interpret those signs, and that's what a prophet does, Aryesha og milo yira, the Arye, and here is clearly referring to God, has roared, Will you not be afraid? Shouldn't I pay attention to this? Adonai Elohim bear. It is God Himself who is speaking. That's why I said that this Arye here is clearly referring to God himself. Me lo yinove, should he, meaning the prophet, not say prophecy? I see the signs. And it is so obvious that I can call everyone around to come and look. Those people whom you were supposed to teach a good example to can come ahead and look. Hashmiyo al arminos bi Ashdod. Ashdod was a city that almost in the first chapter uh, was representative of the Philistines, close by enemies of the Israelites. Announced to the people that live in the fortresses of Ashdod, the Alar Manos Be'aretz Mitzrayim, and those people that live in the fortresses in Egypt, the Imru, and tell them, Hey, Oswal al Hore Shomron, come and gather on the mountaintops of Samaria. Shomron is the capital of the northern kingdom. Gather on the mountaintops and look around. Uru and see. Muhumos Rabos Basocha, how much of a terrible, tumultuous mess it is in that in that place. Why? What is the key? What is the problem with the northern kingdom? Va'ashukim bikirba. There is oppression within it. People are oppressing others. 
if they come and see that, that is so obvious, where there is oppression, there is a society in decay, there is a society where destruction is on its way, unfortunately. Below Yadu, and these people do not know Asos Nuchacha, how to act properly, Noam Adonai says God. Why? Because Ho'otrim Chamas, they gather in their storehouses things that they unjustly took away from others. Vashod Barmanosehem, they are filling their fortresses with showed, with things that they ripped away from other people unjustly and improperly. Such people will have an unfortunate end. This is what the Prophet is seeing. The Prophet sees oppression, sees Hamas, sees a lack of justice, and he knows and interprets the signs of what is coming. So obvious that you don't even need to be a prophet. You can even be the enemies. You can be other people. can just look and see. It's obvious that this society is coming close to its end. Lachain, therefore, so says God, Sar usiviv ha'aretz. The... Um, the uh, tsar, meaning the the um, uh, the the enemy, right, and the one who surrounds the land, he is going to take away from you all of your strength. He will abuse and strip away your fortresses because they were all obtained through illicit bad means. I therefore will no longer provide you the protection. Last chapter I said, I destroyed the enemy before you. Now the enemy will destroy you. And it will, Ko Hamar Elohim, so says God, Kasher Yatzil Ho'ro'emi Piho Arish Techro'ayim Ovedal Ozen. If a shepherd, if a lion comes and attacks one of his sheep and he saves just a few legs or a couple of pieces of the ear of the animal, what does that mean? That's nothing. That's saving nothing. The animal itself is gone. So shall the people of Israel be saved. The nation will be torn up so bad that all that will be left with them is just pieces. With a, a piece of a bed and a piece of a couch. What, what, why? Piece? Because these are items of luxury. And he's referring to the, the luxury that they had, which was all illicitly obtained, dishonestly obtained, obtained through injustice. Those are the little bits and pieces and shreds of useless nothing that's going to be left. Listen to this and testify about this throughout the entire house of Yaakov, which is a um, reference here to the entire house, both Israel and Judah. So says God, the God of all hosts. On the day that I remember and, and mention at the and 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 um, act upon the the sins of the people upon them. Ufakarati alham is bechos beisel, and I will go to the the um, altars of Beit El, those places that were built for the idols, those places where, as Amos has said before, uh, places where people worshipped the 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 workings of their own hands. Venigdu karnosam is beach, and the um, I will chop the horns the corners of the altars and smash them to the ground and I will go to those luxurious people who have summer homes and winter homes this is something that a sign of wealth in those days that where the royalty would have those places I will strike those places and those houses built of 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 shane which is um uh, uh, translated as as ivory, and the, the, the luxurious houses are going to be lost. Visafu batim rabim, and there are many, many, many palaces, the many homes which was way above what they needed, will be gathered up. To me, no Adonai, so says God. In other words, what, because all that wealth was obtained through oppression, because it was obtained through hurting others, because it was obtained dishonestly and with no justice, that is the ultimate end. This is the type of prophecy that Amos wants to teach us. The type of prophecy that interprets the signs that are around them. The type of prophecy that looks at the world and says the hand of God is here. The type of prophecy that looks at the signs of decay and interprets them appropriately and reads the warnings and then warns the people and says, if you don't improve, this is the unfortunate end. Thank you so much for studying Amos chapter 3. Looking forward to studying chapter 4 together.